I'm here today with Steve Troutman. He's going to talk about his family's bake oven, which is behind us. It's uh, one of the few remaining bake ovens in the, uh, in the valley here, and it's also uh, about the only other bake oven besides ours that it's ever used. He has some great stories about the oven, and I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you, Steve. Right south of this farm here is a huge gap in the mountain, in the Makrantunga Mountain, where the Pine Creek flows through, and that is uh, the passageway where the Tulpehocken Path came through which began down in Berks County and traversed through the lowland here and up over the hills towards Sunbury where the Indian town of Shemokin was. So it's only natural that some of the earliest settlers in this area would have come up this Indian path. It was the only path here, the Tolpehocken Trail, they called it. So some of these earliest settlers were people by the name of Baum, and they built a log cabin here in the meadow, in the lowland. And uh, John was quite elderly at this time, but he had a younger family with him, and they essentially lived off the land as it has been handed down to our family through the generations. So Sally B. Wiest is my great-grandmother, and she is the one that I remember using the bake oven. When I was small, I remember her using it, and I was in my early 20s, I suppose, when she passed away. But until her very last year, she was very old-fashioned and would use the bake oven. There would be at least a dozen women were associated with baking bread here over the generations. Earlier, you had asked about these vents on the side. There's one on each side, and this allows air to move through the bake oven so that you can get a better draft. Let's open that up. What you see is there are two containers for two different types of flour in here. Okay. And at one point there may have been either a dough box here on these railings or uh, a wooden. What's the word I'm looking for, Christian? Um. Cutting board? Like a cutting board, a dough board, a dough board for, uh, for uh, kneading the bread. This is cool to actually find this still at the farm where Sally probably used this. And there's still also in here is the later successor to the wooden dough box is a large can or flour tin. These are great for storing flour because mice and rats cannot get into these. They can actually gnaw their way into the dough box or the flour chest. Hi, here we are at the Snyder Dairy Farm. This is one of the few remaining bake ovens in the Mahantondo Valley. It's also the only one that has a squirrel tail uh, flue on it. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Originally, this oven was attached to a summer kitchen. And there was a, still an open fireplace over here. There was a complete building here. And at some point in the not too distant past, they took down the structure and replaced it with basically a pitnit pavilion, which is used for family reunions, pitnits, things like that. But our interest is here with the bake oven. And as I said, this is a, a very interesting oven. It's unique in the fact that it has the squirrel tail flue. The oven itself is probably the tallest interior height of any oven that we have in the valley. What you'll notice is that the Brits form an arch. There is a, a, a band of iron that's curved, and those Brits, at least in the back, are laid against this band of iron. 
The door is conjectural. We're not really sure. What you'll see is that there are two iron straps that come up as though something were actually laid here. And we think that perhaps um, there was a wooden door. We think there may have been um, a wooden a beam that went between these two brackets or supports that fit in here and in effect would help seal the wooden door completely into the opening here. There's also an iron plate at the bottom that goes the entire width of the front of the oven and is actually underneath uh, these two pillars of brick. What you'll notice is that the dome is built up in concentric layers of brick in decreasing size as they get to the very top of the dome, which is actually almost two feet above the brick floor. At the very back of the dome is the flue, and the flue would take the smoke and heat from the fire up over the top of the dome on the outside to the front where it would enter a chimney, which is actually no longer existing. The shanty that was originally here had the open fireplace, which still exists. The trammels were here from which they would hang their kettles for cooking. Right next to the open fireplace was the bake oven. And the bake oven actually extended beyond the back of the summer kitchen, which we'll see when we go around to the other side. So what was here were side by side the open, the open fireplace for cooking and the bake oven for the baking. The bake oven still has its original wood shingle roof, which is also rare in this area. This is a very substantial bake oven foundation. You'll notice that there are large stones alternating with smaller stones, very well made by a professional stonemason. From this side, we have a good view of the dome. The Brits are a, are a low temperature fired brick made in a wood fired kiln from local clay. The cladding is simply more clay. This is the cladding. It's simply clay that was hand padded onto the brick dome. Over the centuries, and this is very likely to a 200 year old bake oven, this has actually started to come off. And you can see the bare brick at the bottom of the dome. On this squirrel tail oven, the flue goes from the back of the dome across the top and originally would have exited into a chimney that would go up the front and out the top of the roof. However, at some point that chimney was taken down and currently the flue simply ends. Let's go through the horseradish and see what we find. an ash pit. The ashes would fall through an opening in the floor of the bake oven, fall down here to the ground level where they could be scooped out. From the back of the bake oven and the shanty fireplace, looking at the colorfully turning autumn poison ivy, you can see that the stone of the fireplace originally actually jutted behind the shanty. What you see with the stone fireplace was exposed and was outside the wooden structure itself of the shanty, as was the bake oven. So both of these parts of the shanty were exposed, but on the inside where you were working, you were actually inside the building itself.